This is Block 11, Reagan's Revolution, Section 4, uh, Reagan's Cold War, with the section Mikhail Gorbachev. When Reagan becomes president, the Soviet leader is this guy, Leonid Brezhnev. He's been the Soviet leader since Khrushchev was fired uh, in the mid-60s. He died in 1982, and he was replaced by this guy here, Yuri Andropov. Andropov died in 1984. Andropov was replaced by this guy here, Konstantin Chernenko. Chernenko died in 1985. Reagan joked that he couldn't possibly negotiate with the Soviets because all their leaders kept dying on him. Finally, in 1985, uh, the Soviets raised to the top of their leadership a younger man, this guy here. He's in his 50s at the time. His name is Mikhail Gorbachev. Uh, Gorbachev uh, was a committed communist. Uh, who wanted to introduce a level of reforms into the Soviet system that would allow the Soviets to compete more effectively uh, with the United States. That Gorbachev wanted to, con uh, wanted to um, reform communism to make it more competitive uh, with the United States and the West. And he was a, what Margaret Thatcher, the conservative prime minister of Great Britain at the time, Margaret Thatcher and Ronald Reagan were very good friends. They both, you know, were conservatives that came to power in the late 70s, early 80s uh, in the United States and Great Britain. And they kind of reestablished that special relationship uh, that the U.S. has with the Brits. But Margaret Thatcher uh, said that Gorbachev was a man that we can work with. Um, in 1987, uh, Ronald Reagan went to Berlin, um, two years after Gorbachev was in power, uh, went to Berlin, the old center of the Cold War, and um, now you can see, this is a neat shot, that here's Reagan standing here, this is the Brandenburg Gate, uh, one of the great monuments of Berlin, uh, and it's also the Brandenburg Gate, the Berlin Wall passed right in front of it, that if you look behind here, right there, um, that's the Berlin Wall, right there, uh, and behind it, is East Berlin, Communist Berlin. So this blue screen here is actually bulletproof glass uh, that the Americans and the West Germans were uh, concerned that the Soviets from East Berlin would try to assassinate Reagan um, as he spoke in Berlin. So that's what that is here. And Reagan stood there in front of the Berlin Wall and he called upon uh, Mikhail Gorbachev to work with him uh, to tear down this wall. It was Reagan was an excellent speaker. You know, obviously he had uh, had you know training as an actor. He was an actor, uh, and he asked Gorbachev to tear down this wall. Gorbachev uh, did not respond. But what the reason why Reagan felt um, that he could make that demand of Gorbachev and maybe have it listened to was because of some of the reforms that Gorbachev was doing. Uh, in the Soviet Union at the time. Uh, and his two main reforms were called uh, perestroika and glasnost. Uh, they are two Russian words. Perestroika is a Russian word meaning restructuring. Um, Gorbachev tried to reform the Soviet economy by introducing limited private property. Um, and soon, 2% um, of Soviet land was permitted to be farmed uh, for profit. And soon, that 2% that of Soviet land uh, was producing 25% of Soviet crops. Gorbachev reduced subsidies for industrial goods, trying to make uh, industries more efficient, and introduced uh, a degree of a profit motive um, in a lot of Soviet heavy industry. Uh, a lot of communist true believers, and there were still a few in the Soviet Union, believed that what Gorbachev was doing uh, was actually an end to communism itself. The other reform was called glasnost. Glasnost is a Russian word meaning openness. Gorbachev introduced limited ideas of political freedom, freedom to criticize the government, uh, into the Soviet Union. That all of a sudden, you know, in the official so and there was in the official Soviet newspaper Pravda, uh, and there was no other newspapers really allowed. It was the Communist Party newspaper. All of a sudden, you started seeing editorials that were critical uh, of the way the Soviet Union was run. Uh, the local elections for Communist Party leaders uh, began to take place, that you had a choice where which communist you wanted uh, to be kind of your local mayor. It could be Communist A or Communist B. You, there was not a... their political parties were still illegal, but at least the people started to get uh, a choice of which communist they would like to rule over them. Um, and th this is Gorbachev's attempt to kind of air out the legacy of Soviet totalitarianism. 
keep in mind, Gorbachev does these things to try to save the Soviet Union. He tries to do them to make the Soviet Union able to compete with Reagan's buildup. Um, that if the Soviet Union is going to hope to compete with the United States, it has to be more open, it has to be more efficient, it has to be wealthier. But you cannot introduce reforms like that uh, without opening a bottle and letting a genie out that that genie cannot go back into. That things in the Soviet Union began to change, uh, and they soon, very soon, started to change outside of Gorbachev's grasp. What this allowed Reagan to do, you know, this is something, now this is a guy that Reagan can work with. He's changing the Soviet Union. He's introducing reforms that the Soviet economy is cranking and creaking, you know, in a lot of different ways. So now, after six years of kind of keeping the screws on, Reagan is willing to negotiate with Gorbachev. Reagan came to the negotiating table. He keeps, now, Gorbachev is in the position of, of, of the weaker power at this point. Reagan kind of gets to call the shots in a lot of ways. Reagan keeps SDI, uh, Reagan keeps his military buildup, uh, and then Reagan and Gorbachev agree to get all those intermediate missiles that we talked about out of Western Europe. For the first time ever, all of the intermediate range nuclear missiles were uh, eliminated. That the superpowers eliminated an entire class of nuclear missiles. And then the two of them almost became little buddies. Um, Gorbachev invited Reagan to the Soviet Union in 1988, uh, and Reagan journeyed to Moscow. That it was the first time an American president had ever been to Moscow. Um, and you can see here's President Reagan and Gorbachev in front of the Kremlin, um, you know, the, the headquarters, if you will, of the Soviet government. Here they are signing that um, treaty banning those types of nuclear missiles. You know, Reagan is invited to speak in front of the students at Moscow University. He praised Gorbachev warmly. He extolled the virtues of democracy and freedom and liberty. And this is just, like, it's incredible. Like, the idea that an American president was going to Moscow, the heart of the evil empire, and giving a speech saying how wonderful freedom and democracy were would have literally been unthinkable, you know, three or four short years earlier. When Reagan left office in January of 1989, the United States was stronger than it had been in a long time, and the Soviet Union was undergoing fundamental, fundamental changes. And that's Reagan's, you know, that Reagan was not president when the whole, when the Soviet Union came crashing down. Uh, that would happen under his successor, George H.W. Bush. Uh, but Reagan, in a lot of ways, and Gorbachev too, they both deserve a lot of credit, um, to the changes that were going to be coming very, very quickly.